This has to be one of HPI's best looking on-road releases. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Sport 3 Flux Audi e-tron Vision GT. It's a brushless four-wheel drive ready to run that is capable of reaching some really fast speeds. And the chassis is rather simple, as well as the drivetrain and the suspension. So the question remains, does it have what it takes to rule the parking lot? Check this thing out. I mean, true HPI fashion, a killer looking body on it. Let's take a look at the detail on the front. Love the splitter, really nice decal package. The side mirrors are molded separately as well, but I did notice this one is kind of mounted a little awkward. And then back here, that spoiler, that is absolutely awesome. This is molded plastic too. Check out the arrow work out back. Dish wheel, nice and aerodynamic. The one thing I did notice when I pulled it out of the box here is, you know, this thing is pretty much on the ground. Look at that. I, I lift it up and it's still basically on the ground. So we're gonna have to do maybe some suspension work because uh, I think that chassis is sitting on the workbench and uh, we don't even have a battery in there yet. But here is a Sport 3 chassis and it's a really nice basic composite plastic chassis here, a lot of composite plastic parts, uh, but it's really well designed. Just a nice simple layout and sometimes simple is better. Okay, uh, up front here really quick, let's just check it out. You know, we've got a foam front bumper, composite shock towers, your standard A-arm style of suspension with fixed upper links, oil-filled shocks, and I did notice that there's also a cast front metal pivot mount, so that's pretty cool. That should help firm things up. It has one in the rear as well. You know, H-arms out back, fixed upper links, composite rear tower. Now let's check out the rear suspension here because there's, there's something up with it. So, um, I mean, look at this. We're almost on the ground. And then I actually noticed when you pick it up, this tire over here lifts off the ground before the other tire. So that means something is tweaked and I got to figure out what it is. This will cause some handling issues if you don't fix it. The drivetrain, metal gear differentials, drive shaft down the center, spur gears all covered up. So nothing will get on the inside. Metal dog bones, steel out drive, steel axle shafts, a cast motor mount. But uh, here's another thing I wanted to point out to you guys. Check out the motor. It's kind of on an angle. And I, I actually popped this gear cover off really quickly and I could see that the gear is kind of tilted in towards the spur gear. So I got to figure out what's up with that as well. Let's go over to uh, the electronics really quick. We've got the HPI Flux brushless system. It's 3S LiPo compatible, 4,000 kV motor, standard steering servo, all waterproof electronics, uh, even a servo saver on the servo. Check out these tires. I forgot to mention that before. Really nice looking treaded tire, a wider tire out back than in the front. There is some flex to this chassis, so I wanted to point that out. Now I just need to quickly show you what else comes in the box. The TF41 radio system, instruction manual, some double A's. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this stuff and you know we'll go out and test it and I'll let you know all of my findings at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around. Look at this parking lot, perfect for driving the e-tron. Look at this thing go. There we go, that's full throttle in the parking lot into a power slide turn. Oh man. What I'm finding is this thing is still quite loose in the rear. A little bit of a handful. Some of it is actually the body hitting the ground. The body is pretty low in the back. It's gonna need some tuning. <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it. Check out the wear on these tires. Blaster corner here. High speed corner, <laughs> checking it up. Yeah. This thing does look really cool though. Here we got traction, pull through the corner, power slide. Yeah. You hear that thing skipping. Oh man. And I raised up the body too. That's top speed for you. Into a power slide turn. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, look at that. The whole rear of the car is just way too low out of the box. 
and uh, the rear of the body is just scraping there. So I actually raised it up and it's still scraping. So that's got to be uh, adjusted, but I think we got to pull the limiters out of the shocks on this. Well, I wound up having a really good time driving the car. However, we've got some stuff to talk about. Uh, obviously, I had some fixes to do before I even went out and tried the car. Let's start off with the motor that was on the angle. After some diagnosing, I found out that there is a little piece of metal on the motor mount itself that was hanging up against the motor plate. And so what I did is I just ground that piece off and it wound up allowing me to straighten the motor out to where it needed to be. It fit in place properly. The other thing that I had to take care of was what I thought was chassis tweak. It turns out that actually the rear suspension arm was twisted. So when I pulled up the car, that's why the one wheel was coming up. So what I did to fix that was I took the arm off, I boiled it in hot water, put it down on a flat surface, put a weight on top of it, let it cure, and it was straightened back out again. And then the other thing was the body was obviously on the ground, and I actually raised it up two holes from where it came out of the box, and as you guys heard in the action video, the body was still scraping on the ground, and I, I could have fixed it, but I wanted to show you guys the car as close to out of the box as possible, so you know what to expect. So if you experience something similar, if you get this car, you know what to fix because hopefully I helped you guys out. I did speak to HPI about some of these issues and apparently they've already made some fixes to the body and they weren't aware of the other issues that I dealt with with the motor plate and the arm. But they said that if anybody that gets one of these cars that has a similar issue, they would be more than happy to supply parts in order to fix it. So after the initial running of the car, came back here to the workshop and I raised up the body one more hole in the rear. I also took the limiters out of the rear shock because the rear of this car was really loose. But once I took the limiters out of the shocks, took the car back out for another drive and it handled a lot better. The rear tires are pretty much toast, so that was a little bit of my handling issue for follow-up runs, but the car worked a lot better with raising up the body, uh, getting rid of those limiters. That's when it was a lot of fun. The only other thing that I noticed with it is there is a lot of steering chatter in the front and really that servo saver needs to go. And a better servo would actually be a, a benefit in this car as well, especially if you're gonna go on high-speed runs with it and that's something I'm not going to do with this. The car is capable of doing 70 miles an hour with some tweaks and the uh, pinion gear change and stuff, but I think it's just too much for this. If you're new to the RC scene and this car interests you, I would pretty much steer you away from it. It needs work to handle better. Uh, it needs a little bit of work for high speeds, and I would really recommend this car for someone with experience that is capable of doing it. I think it's worth putting the effort into if you really like the car and you know what to do in order to tweak it. Uh, I think it's definitely a fun car. I like this chassis. I've had experience with them before and they work well, but this car does need someone with experience behind it in order to have fun with it.